Hey guys, welcome to GameBet. Today bringing you a video for our Warzone Weapon Series. And today we're going to be covering the new Bruin build of the M249 Saw that I've been using a little bit here in Warzone. And why this thing is making a comeback. Very underrated weapon after it had previously dominated the meta back in Season 5, I believe. 4 and 5, I believe it was, of Modern Warfare before it received heavy nerfs. And then it's really never been used since you rarely, rarely ever see anybody running this. And uh, I've covered a few different builds of this, mainly the Mark 46. And today we're going to look at the long barrel, summit barrel of the M249 saw and why this thing is still a very, very deadly and very viable weapon in Warzone, especially amidst all the dominant Cold War weapons. So, walking through a really nice quad win we had here with a really crazy clutch at the end, and uh, we'll take a look at how this saw performs. So, go ahead and we'll back out, take a look at the final product here for the M249 saw. So, let me go ahead back and we'll strip this down. So, the Bruin Mark 9. Uh, this thing previously, I'll show off what the previous meta was here. Previously, back before it received a nerf, was something along the lines of this. People wouldn't even run a underbarrel. This would basically be the previous meta with this thing, which is just extremely ugly looking in my opinion. This obviously not very viable anymore. You can still get away with it, maybe mouse and keyboard especially. But uh, as far as the accuracy at range and lack of recoil... Uh, that no longer exists. So really we need to find other ways to use this weapon. And I'll link the Mark 46 video down below that I've covered before previously. But for this one, we're going to go with the Summit Barrel again. I wanted to try and find a way to use this in Warzone that it was viable. And I wanted maximum, maximum accuracy for those longer range engagements to really combat the new Cold War meta. So first off, we'll start with the muzzle. Go ahead and do the Monolithic Suppressor. Give us that sound suppression damage at range. Uh, keep us off the minimap map with the cons here, ADS speed and the aim walking steadiness. Next up for the barrel option, we'll go ahead and swap to the Summit Barrel. Now, previously for the Mark 46, we would run the, the Horizon Barrel, which again gives us that Mark 46. The handguard, we got a quad Picatinny rail system on there. It looks really nice too. And this is actually a really viable barrel option for Warzone. This has really been my go-to for a long, long time. Uh, before they nerfed the weapon, I was using the Para a lot. But now, not as viable unless you're doing for anything inside 40, 50 meters. So the Summit Barrel, 26.8 inches. This is still very the best barrel in slot, obviously. Still very viable. The mobility is surprisingly good. So the pros here, damage at range, bullet velocity, and the recoil control, which is going to be... We're going to get the same pros and cons with the Horizon, except we get additional recoil control here with that longer barrel with the Summit. The cons are going to be the ADS speed and the movement speed, which, again, the way we're going to run this doesn't really impact it too much. We're not running and gunning, per se, with this. So we'll select that. Laser, we'll go ahead and skip out on that option for this particular build. Now, for the optic, if you guys know me, I'm going to run the Integral Hybrid or the Leopold Hammer optic. Gives us that clean 3.25 optic with the top mount of Delta in case we need to do anything at closer ranges, which typically with this, not going to have to, but it's definitely good to have that option. So that'll give us that option to toggle, as well as the cons or the ADS speed. But again, it's a LMG with a 100-round belt, so not expecting to be running and gunning too much with this. So we'll select that. We'll keep the base stock. We'll skip out on the perks as well as the rear grip, as well as the ammo. We obviously have a 200 round belt option here, which is actually a lot of fun to use. I do run this quite a bit. Um, it is a lot of fun, but we want to make this as, as viable as possible. So we'll skip out on that. And we're actually going to go with the underbarrel attachment and we'll go with the command of foregrip for the recoil stabilization and the aiming stability. The cons here are the movement speed. And then one last attachment here with the fifth and final attachment, because we're not using an ammo slot, typically, Previous meadow, everyone would run this 60 round mag. We're going to go ahead and run that tack laser. So that'll give us the aim down sight speed, the aiming stability, and the aim walking steadiness. With the con being the laser is visible to enemies. But again, the way we're using this, typically medium to long ranges, it's not going to matter. And it's just going to give us more pros than cons. So we'll run the tack laser. This is our final build for the Bruin Mark 9 or the M249 saw. Again, running that nice 100 round belt. You can see there it's got the bipod folded up. It looks aesthetically uh, very pleasing this weapon. However, unfortunately, that foregrip is covering the bipod. So, we, and if we're looking at this now, we wouldn't really be able to deploy the bipod the way this is set up, which is unfortunate. But again, if we're not running the bipod, so it's just kind of a cosmetic issue there. But otherwise, 100 round belt. It's running the, I believe, if we were to look at the ammo, it's running the M855A1. You can see on the side of the box there, M855A1. Rounds of the 556 by 45 NATO. And then one quick option for our reticle. What we're going to do, you'll see this optic, the heroic. It's going to give us a nice, clean T-pose with that top mount of Delta having that yellow 
uh, hollow reticle there, that circular reticle, which we're typically not going to be using too much, but it gives us clean precision sight picture for those longer range engagements. And this is our final design. Again, that attack laser really helps us with a lot of these long range engagements. So let's go ahead now and we'll jump into the gameplay with this. Our operator for this video is going to be, I typically try and run operators with the weapon. So we're going to be running Reigns with the Outback skin here. I know our community moderator, Odin, loves this skin too. And he's the reason I ended up going back and buying this. This is actually one of the more underrated uh, operator skins of the game. Definitely one of my favorite hands down for the Delta type loadouts. So we're going to be running him today. And so we go ahead. Here's a final look at our saw. So let's go ahead now and we'll jump into the gameplay. I'll walk you through this really, really crazy quad win along with probably one of the craziest clutches you'll ever see. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that. Let's jump into it. So here we go with the gameplay. We landed over here in Promenade. We did a lot of looting. Actually, we landed a little further up, but we've been looting for quite a while. This is really our first big engagement. We have guys on the minimap here that we picked up on the UAV. And so they're pushing in and I think Dill has another angle on them and he's gonna end up getting down here. You can see I get engaged by this guy. I'm gonna fire with the saw here, I break him. Now this is key to really any engagement and I myself don't do this enough, is repositioning. I have the hill cover in front of me and that guy, he's going to assume my position is where he last saw me. And you can see I just did a nice wide pie flank on him. And he's looking right there, he's looking right where I previously was and I'm able to take him by surprise and down him. He has no idea where I was. Another guy pushing here. Now the downside obviously with the saw, if you're running a belt, is the slow reload. So it's gonna take about five or six seconds to reload this belt. But again, then we're back up and running with a 100 round belt. This guy's still on the rock. I'm able to get another down there. So we have two downs at this point. I'm gonna keep plating up. And again, I'm gonna reposition again. So now I'm being pinged in the previous position I was. You can see this guy's going to res his buddy. He has no idea I'm at that angle. No, and I'm able to down him. So it's three downs at this point. And the, the fourth and final guy is up over there. And now it looks like uh, the previous guy downed had uh, this Adler skin here that just downed Chase. This is the first guy I think I downed uh, had a self-res. At least one of them definitely has a self-res that I, that I downed. And uh, so Chase is down. You can see I get one kill there for one of my downs. And then this one guy's on Chase. Rylan's engaging a guy. So this is tough. Dill comes back in. I'm not sure where this guy is that down chase and I make a mistake here. I tried to push and I just got caught. I didn't slide fast enough and I just made a bad mistake there. Uh, I technically should have stayed behind that dirt pile and I would have easily been able to get him when he came at. I shouldn't have pushed him, but I had the AA-12. I got a little confident that he was going to be closer to that building and I'd be able to get a, a flank on him. But again, easy gulag. I'm able to get out of there, push forward. We were able to kill the, that rest of that team. Uh, now another team in promenade area here. Ryland, you can see in the kill cam, is able to down one. I'm going to go push and get Dill. And Ryland, just a beast with that QBZ, is able to kill the other guy. So fast forward a few seconds here. We need to move out of promenade. We did a few recons. You can see this poor guy coming in. And you can see this reticle. Just so clean, that reticle. Allows me to get shots on target really easily. You're able to get that gulager. At least I think he was a gulager. He could have been coming out of train. But coming forward a little bit more here. We down. move out of uh, train station My to the buy station. And we get jumped here. So this guy, even though he downs me, I broke him and I, I got my saw up and, and on target really quickly, which is surprising given he had a Krig 6. Uh, unfortunately, I got finished by a sniper there. But here you can see, we'll spectate Dill. Uh, and he's running that new perk that allows you to see the uh, opponents through walls as you're hitting them. And he's got uh, the grenades that allow you to also see the snapshot grenades. So. They're able to team wipe that team, buy us back because we had a lot of money. So, again, we need to keep pushing towards where we think the circle is going to be. And pool was where we decided we needed to be. Ideally, we wanted to be on the roof, but that was going to be hard. We had a couple teams around us. You can see this guy pushes in the AA-12 with the Jock-12 coming in clutch there at close range. Running it with the saw is a really good pairing option here uh, because the saw is going to be medium to long range. And the Jock-12, honestly, just works better than submachine guns, in my opinion, for the ranges that I'm typically using it. And it gets that down again. The saw, you can see there. I'm able to get this guy coming in the pool. We have a bunch of guys around us. There is, there is seven teams left at this point. One including ours. So six total. And they're all around us at this point. We have a team, two teams behind us over by fire. We have a couple teams out in storage. So we're really surrounded. And there's also people on the roof. So we're basically stuck here. But it's not a bad place to be stuck given the circle. So this team from fire that we were engaging previously and was engaging us. We had a long engagement here that I skipped over just because we were firing back and forth out the windows. But I'm able to get it down with my mine there. And again, we have those snapshot grenades. 
and you can just see how the saw it really really good at these medium range so, i mean these close range engagements like this 20 30 meters max and it's still uh the mobility on it is surprisingly well especially running that hunter round bell so here again we're, we have two saws i believe chase has a saw also i'm running a saw and again really just able to hold this area down we have mines on the stairs because for some reason these guys are trying to push us i don't know why you can see this guy comes up the stairs he downs Dale and then he runs out. And here, I'm running that new perk also that allows you to see enemies when you uh, when you hit them. So instead of amped, I'm running that, which you can see just really, the swap is really, really slow. So I wouldn't recommend it if you're running this kind of loadout just because I'm switching back and forth so slowly where I could have had probably a few more kills there. But here, fast forward just a few seconds later, we lose Chase and now it's it's uh, one more team left, so it's 3v3 at this point. And I'm going to push out of here. There was a guy below us, which I'm, I'm not certain if he's still there. He might, he actually must have rotated out the side, and that's who was actually shooting through the front of the pool. So I'm just going to check my uh, heartbeat there once more. We have a couple guys pegged, pegged on the minimap. And you can see Rylan, I think he's running the Fennec there, just beasting that guy. And here, this guy, I'm going to push him because I got hits. And uh, Dale and I are able to take him out. And this last dude, it's 2v1. And this guy has a great shot. I saw him. But, uh, wow. What a good shot by him. And here you're going to see just probably one of the craziest clutches by Dale. Dale's running the SA, the SA-80 with a full metal jacket. He's got the new perk on that allows you, if you get hits, you can see the enemy. And he's got snapshot grenades. So just watch. Full metal jacket. He's able to come through the wall. Uh, just crazy overpowered this perk allows you to see yeah. this guy, especially with the snapshot. So, uh, this Good guy shit. left the game, so we had to uh, wait about 15 seconds as enemy forfeited. He left the game because he was trying to do his self res, and that was just insane. Dill killed him with the last bullet. <laughs> and talk about wall hacks. I don't know what the, the purpose of that perk was. Maybe because they can't get the anti cheat under control right now, so they decided to give everybody some sort of wall hacks. Really weird, uh, perk. I'm probably going to take it off for amp just because i move too slow as is with the weapons i run but you can see dill there coming in clutch with that sa80 uh one of the more underrated lmgs for sure and unfortunately you can't get the end cutscene with the machine gun which is kind of a bummer but you can see they're really great game uh we had uh, i think seven we really evenly balanced kills here you'll see but the saw just a really impressive reliable weapon especially for modern warfare weapons lmgs could be potentially one of the best lmgs up there with some of the other other ones it's really debatable it's a close call but the saw uh very easy to control for some of the others but you can see that kill split seven seven four and five let me know down below what you guys think of the m249 saw or the Bruin mark six is it something you're still using today is it something you kind of gave up when they nerfed it or is it a weapon you might go back to at some point after seeing this video i think it's one of the more underrated machine guns and again it still is extremely powerful there's a debate there, I would say, with probably three machine guns from the Modern Warfare side, which could potentially be one of the best, really just depending on how you're going to run them. But the saw is definitely up there, and it's a really good, reliable weapon, especially with that 100-round belt. And if you really want to get crazy, you can run the 200-round belt and just get rid of the tack laser. You'll ADS speed will be a lot slower, but, man, you could put shots down range pretty easily. So let me know down below what you guys think of the Bruin Mark VI or the M249 saw. Until next time, this is Buffner Gaming, out.